110 years ago, on April 15, 1912, the RMS Titanic made her historic and tragic descent into the icy depths of the northern Atlantic Ocean, nearly 400 miles off the coast of Newfoundland, Canada. That night, approximately 1,500 of the ship's 2,200 original passengers were forced to brave the freezing waters of the North Atlantic, with temperatures sinking to negative 2.7 degrees Celsius. For reference, hypothermia occurs when the body's core temperature dips below 35 degrees Celsius, only 2 degrees lower than the basal body temperature of 37 degrees Celsius. And in frigid water, the cold only sets in faster. Passengers lasted anywhere from 15 to 45 minutes in the water before succumbing to hypothermia. One first-hand account of the event comes from the Titanic's second officer, Charles Lightoller. He stated, Striking the water was like a thousand knives being driven into one's body. The temperature was 28 degrees, four degrees below freezing. But, but some organisms are just built different. Lurking deep below in the same dark waters of the northern Atlantic, unfazed by the unforgiving temperatures of early spring, is a very special sort of fish called the ocean pout. These fish can brave the freezing waters of the northern Atlantic due to the antifreeze protein found in their blood. Ocean pouts look like this. But they can have many different representations, like this. I find that Fred is the closest representation of what an ocean pout would look like if he were in the Spongebob universe. Proteins are made up of amino acids linked together by peptide bonds. They are the most functionally diverse class of macromolecules and can carry out a myriad of complex tasks. The protein in, the protein in ocean pouts is called the type 3 antifreeze protein, or type 3 AFP for short. These proteins are responsible for preventing ice formation in the body by binding to and inhibiting the growth of ice crystals. The ocean pout's resilience against freezing temperatures makes it freeze avoidant, which means it can prevent its body fluids from freezing altogether. So how do antifreeze proteins work? Antifreeze proteins, aka ice structuring proteins, are specialized polypeptides developed to protect organisms in freezing temperatures. They work, by restricting, they work by restricting the growth of ice in the blood to manageable sizes. Ice is dangerous because it can grow inside cells and cause them to burst. This can happen to organisms all across the tree of life, from plants to bacteria. In liquid form, water is constantly moving. As the temperature cools and it reaches its freezing point of zero degrees Celsius, water molecules slow down and start to stick together, forming into hexagonal crystals. Gaps form in the ice crystals upon freezing, and this causes ice to expand. Ice grows gradually, with smaller crystals attaching to each other until larger crystals form. Although ice is a solid, it's still less dense than water, and that's why formations like 100-foot icebergs float. And when fish like the ocean pout move through the freezing ocean, they ingest some of the icy water, which can lead to the formation of ice crystals in their blood. When water freezes, tiny ice crystals begin to grow. As the crystals grow, they expand using nearby water molecules from the smaller crystals that surround them. This is known as ice recrystallization. Antifreeze proteins work by irreversibly attaching to the surface of the ice crystals and preventing them from growing into larger, more dangerous ones essentially inhibiting ice re recrystallization. Antifreeze proteins have a noticeable impact on the freezing point of water. They can lower water's freezing point by a few degrees, but they typically don't change the melting point of ice. This phenomenon is termed thermal hysteresis. Scientists can determine how active an AFP is by measuring the difference between an established melting point and the new freezing point of molecules AFPs are attached to. There are four types of the AFPs bound in fish, and each of them contain an ice binding site and a peptide backbone. The ice binding site is primarily composed of beta pleated sheets, which is a type of secondary structure. Type 3 AFPs are found in ocean pout fish, like the one we're focusing on in this video. They're similar to type 1 AFPs because they're also hydrophobic at ice binding surfaces. 
They are characterized as having a beta sandwich in its, in its structure. <laughs> so now let's focus specifically on the type 3 AFP found in the North Atlantic Ocean Pout. These AFPs, oh, this AFP is a globular protein made of twisted loops folded into a triple strand, strand beta sheets. Globular proteins are known for being compact, water soluble, and having a mixture of secondary structures like alpha helices and beta strands. In the case of type 3 AFPs, only beta strands are present. Type 3 AFP structure was determined through nuclear magnetic resonance spectro spectro spectroscopy. Type 3 AFP structure was determined through nuclear magnetic resonance spectroscopy. Using this method, scientists discovered that it's composed of 66 amino acids and exhibits unique folding where eight beta strands form two sheets of three antiparallel strands and one sheet of two antiparallel strands. Kind of like a sandwich. This configuration of triple-stranded sheets creates a structure known as a beta sandwich, which is pretty unique considering the other fish AFPs all have alpha helices. In order for AFP3 to do its job, it first has to bind to ice. Although scientists aren't 100% certain on the mechanisms that attach AFPs to ice, many believe the proteins bind to ice in a way that mimics protein ligand, ligand interactions, where the structure of the protein fits neatly into the hexagonal shape of the ice crystals, and this helps the protein latch onto the ice. From there, more AFPs can surround the ice crystal and prevent ice recrystallization. Scientists hypothesize that the threonine 18 residue located on the flat surface of type 3 AFPs play a key role in recognizing and binding to the primary plasma. <laughs> Scientists hypothesize that the threonine 18 residue located on the flat surface of type 3 AFPs play a key role in recognizing and binding to the primary prism planes of ice. Once AFPs fully surround the ice surface and water can no longer interact with it, ice growth is prevented. Some research has shown that these proteins... Some research has shown that these amino acids are ice binding residues that can change the thermal hysteresis activity of AFPs. Reports indicate that replacing the threonine 18 with asparagine can decrease thermal hysteresis activity significantly by at least 90%, by at most 90%. Additionally, these reports have shown that hydrophobic interactions on binding sites are critical to the functioning of the protein. Small antifreeze proteins like AFP3 often contain a hydrophobic core, which stabilizes its overall structure. The hydrophobic core is made up of hy hydrophobic interactions and hydrogen bonds at the center of the structure. When, a hy when hydrophobic residues such as these proteins When hydrophobic residues like these were replaced with alanine, a 20% loss in activity was observed. Antifreeze proteins are mainly used to prevent ice crystals from growing too large. Because of this, they have a multitude of potential applications in cryopreservation, food technology, the petroleum industry, and more. Most notably, AFPs have been used in ice cream to keep its beautiful creamy texture. Have you ever reached for your favorite frozen treat only to find that a bunch of ice crystals have collected in the container? Ice recrystallization can cause hard ice chunks to form in ice cream that aren't formulated with AFPs. Adding AFPs, from the ocean pout specifically, can preserve it.